All right, we're back. Interruptions. I don't get as many as I used to have, but I still get them. All right, there we go. So, plate, bolts. Here's the long bolt. That's probably way too long. See how far it sticks through? It's way too much. Shorter bolt. That looks good. That's over one and a half diameters. That's plenty. Diameter means the diameter of the bolts, three eighths. Two diameters is three quarters of inch stick through. And one and a half diameters would be about five eighths stick through. Okay, there's over the big bolts. These are the small bolts. All right. We're still having some interference issues here. Yep. So it looks like we are going to have to do something no matter what. Yep. We are hitting on the inner piece. Not as bad as the front piece, but it is hitting. So this piece here sticks way back. This one only sticks way a little bit, but it doesn't matter. It's hitting. Over. Yeah, not hitting now. So this here needs to come off a little bit right in this area here. So I got to mark it. So I know where it needs to be cut. Do a little trimming. Now Harley used to make a one inch offset spacer or inch and a quarter or something like that. I think it was only one inch. When he had a generator bike with the alternator on, with the um, electric start, 65 to 69, they had a big spacer about that thick one behind the rocker clutch. When you had a mount, when you had a hand, hand shift bike. So that spacer is out there. And uh, I've also seen when they were making them for applications like this too, where they would space the whole thing out that inch. I used to have a couple of them floating around, but I'm not sure where those are at now. Okay, it looks like we are very close to fitting. Yes, we are. There goes the bolt. Maybe it will just fit. I think it might just make it. Uh, let's see, where is my tool that? It might just do it. Just feel it hitting on it. All right. So it's going to be hitting from here to here. So it's just hitting right there, just a little bit. It's already wearing itself in. Yep, it's already getting itself worn in. So all I gotta do is come in there and just give it a kiss with a file right there. And it'll be clearance for good. We still gotta space it out that I didn't mount. It needs to have at least three eighths of an inch of a space run there. We got about an eighth inch extra. So, I could lose some of that, but no reason to. So, this here is bottoming out the threads in there. That's why it's getting really hard to go in. So, those threads are getting bad. So, 
because that one's bottomed out in the hole. The other ones are flush. And they'll stick out, so that's plus. And we have no lock washer in these. Should run some kind of a locking device on here, plus lock tight. Especially when you got a spacer sticking out. So the frame back in there is kind of crappy, I guess. I'm not sure what part of the thread is hitting. It's a big turd back there, but they never went all the way through, it looks like. So I'm going to go get me a turd removing tool. This is called a turd removing tool over here. Three eighths bottoming top. Turd removal tool. Right there. I think that's in the factory service book if you look it up. Definitely something back there. It's a solid piece of something. Ooh, my flashlight out. Yep. Not sure what the hell that thing is. Oh, that dumbass. The helicoil in there. That's the helicoil tank sticking through. Dumbass is helicoil the thread. They never fixed the damn. They never knocked the tang off. Dumbasses. All right. Where's my little flat blade screwdriver? It's a helicoil removing tool. So which way is which? Okay, the base of it's on this side over here. It's probably going to push the heel curl out the back side, I bet. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, the heel claw moved in when I tightened it up. So now it's gone in deeper. So that heel coil now is not the best of condition. So I'm going to have to remove that helicoil somehow. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where all my helicoil stuff's at, so for now I'm going to leave it. But somewhere i got to find my helicoil removing stuff and, and put a new helicoil in that hole or move it out. Right now it's in deeper, so it's out of the way. It moved at half a turn or something when I tightened up with this. Yeah, that's why it felt funny going into. All right, so always knock those tangs off on your helicoil, or it doesn't help you. Any. Okay, so we're gonna leave that. Leave that for now. Okay, I go back up here and work on this part up here. That's a little file job. So I just need a little simple file of some type. A half moon file will work just fine. Something like this one right here. We're using a half moon because we only want to cut just a little bit right in one little area. If you use a flat file, we'll go more of a bigger area. There we go. Get the camera out of my way so I don't knock it over my elbow. That does happen. Probably enough. It's a pretty fine file, so it doesn't do much. It doesn't need to do much. And I think it did enough. Alright, I'm going to put it back in there again. 
figure all my helicoils are at. They should be in a drawer. Let me see if I can find them here. Uh, let's see. If you're a helicoil, what drawer would you be in? Uh, that one, that one, or that one. Pretty sure it's not over there. So I think this has all my machinery stuff in it, so... That means the heat of coals will be right in this drawer right here. Nope. One above it. There we go. But the 3 8 coarse thread one was not in the drawer originally. Let's see if it got put in the drawer. It did get put in the drawer right there. Now we're going to need a removal tool which I have one in my kit over here. There's your removal tool right here. And this is the other tool. Okay. So right now the helicoil is in a turn and a half too deep. So lucky the tang is right here in the front. good for doing this but it's kind of working it's digging in though but it'll come out a little bit where's the top where's the tang at trying to see where the first thread's hitting at I think we're just shaving the helicoil at this point. Let's see if I can figure out where the tang is at down in there. It's definitely back inside the hole. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. Hole's down here. there on the top. So if I jam it in this way. Turn a little bit. So it's made not to come out and I'm forcing it out. I think I picked up one thread. The tang on the other side is definitely in a different location where it was. Pulling the thread right here, you're cutting metal. As you're pulling heat out, it's actually shaving metal out of the, out of the hole. It doesn't, it's not supposed to come out this way. <laughs> We're forcing it anyway. Coming out any further. There's at least one full turn of helicoil sticking out the back side that I can feel. So at this point, I think we're just going to go running all the way through. 
put a whole new one in there. It's not going to go in. They didn't tap it all the way. Tang broke off. Okay, let's see if we screw the helical up or the bolt will go in here right now. I don't think it's going to go in. No. Helical is screwed up now. Alright, so now we have to get it out. Fun, fun, fun. Let's see here. Let's see, maybe I can clean up. These taps and helicloths don't mix very well. They tend to break both parts. Okay, that had a burr right there. I'll stop right at that point there. I'm not sure if the hole is tapped all the way through. If it's not, it gets tapered and it pinches at the very end. That's kind of what it feels like it's doing right now. It's definitely not running through like it's supposed to. And there's plenty of room for the whole thing to go through, so. Alright, so at this point we need to get that thing out of there. Alright. Alright, so my trick for doing that is to fold up the helicoil. You put a screwdriver in there and knock it out. So you can get underneath the helicoil and bend it up. That'll bring it back up and then you put the screwdriver in and screw it out. That's how you do it. So I think the tank starts right there. Too far up. Let's go with this position over here. Yeah, I'm gonna mess. Can't tell where the start of the helical is at. At some point, I'm going to do something that matters. Okay, now the helical is now flattened out a little bit. Now if I can get to come out the rest of the way down. there but not coming down there it goes okay problems I went in too deep on the rest of the vehicle so it's gonna be really hard to get it out you now so this is the tang where I bent it down. The problem is the second one behind it I've been working on too. So if you just put a screwdriver in here, a lot of times we'll just unscrew at this point. Like that. Once you get it out, you retap the hole. Shorten the helicoil so it doesn't go all the way through the whole thing. And then put it in correctly. So that was screwed up in the bottom of the hole in there. I'm not sure where. It looks like this hole goes completely through. So 
That means we can just take our new tap right here and just run it right through. And fix it. Okay, now we're going to go all the way through the hole this time. There we go. See that last turn and a half, they didn't go all the way through. That's what caused the helicoil to pinch on the other end and be the problem. Now the hole goes all the way through. You can put a helicoil on it correctly. And it'll work. So it takes a short helicoil like that. Not a long one like this. <clears throat> so you want to make sure it's less than what the top is up in here, which it is. So this should go through. Well, it looks kind of weird. It almost looks like it's a fine thread helicoil and not a coarse. This one's coarse. I'm definitely using this one. This one's a little bit longer, so I'm going to shorten it a little bit. So that's a pretty simple thing to do. Take your dikes. You can see where the damn thing is cut before. And you cut off one helical, one, one round section. Now it's shorter. Check your length. Remember, it's going to expand out when it goes in the hole. So I'm going to take out another half a coil. you got to have a good pair of dikes to do that. See how these are chipped on the end? I've been doing that for years with this pair of dikes. It's an old pair of proto dikes. Back when they made good tools. Okay, now we got a special short helicoil. It's probably one diameter, three eighths by three eighths. Uh, here's the installation tool. You have a tang. This goes into the tang. To get in there, you drive it in. Now, when you start it, don't push on this. Push on the helicoil itself to get it to start. I just use my fingers, but you can put a little screwdriver early in a little little crescent wrench on there. Looks works good, or a little small wrench. Just push on the helicoil like that and turn this. Don't push with this. If you do, you push the tang in. It cross spreads on you. You want to go below the surface on one side and not sticking out on the other side, ideally. If the helicoil sticks up above the surface on this side, it will never tighten up. It'll push against the helicoil and not be tight. Okay, it's not going through yet, but it's close. Go down much more. Okay, you see where the tang is at? On the bottom on this one. Do that. I heard it come out the other side. Put your finger in there just to make sure you're good. So now the hole goes all the way through like it's supposed to. The tang, I think it's sitting back on the top of this. If I was in the motor, I would not put the motor together until I find the tang. But this motor sealed, so I don't worry about it. Okay, now you can take your bolt that hasn't been screwed up yet. I think this one's still usable. Uh, <clears throat> that's my damn legs. Here's a good bolt. And see it goes all the way through like it's supposed to, out the other side. Yeah, you can't see it. You can see it from this side. Need no problem. Works like it's supposed to. Alright, let me get all this cleaned up and we'll be back.